Best of my arb, well, world, well, my fesca deuce, I had a wham lap, I mean. Best of my arb, well, world, well, my fesca deuce, I had a wham lap, I mean. Best of my arb, well, world, well, my fesca deuce, I had a wham lap, I mean. Good morning, blessed love, yet to break for cure. Um, so, on with the journey of the reading the Ethiopian Bible, a chapter a day. Now on day 31 and Genesis 31. And it's it's quite a long chapter this morning, so we're going to get straight into it. And hopefully I've left time for a little bit of reasoning at the end. So, for these few words I give thanks. And he hears the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken all that our father has. Indeed, from that which our father has, he has made all his glory. And Jacob sees the face of Laban, and behold, it is not with him as before. And Yahweh says to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers, and to your father, and I am with you. And Jacob sends and calls to Rachel and Leah to the field, to his flock, excuse me, and says to them, I am beholding your father's face, that is not towards me as before. And the God of my father has been with me, and you have known that with all my power I have served your father, and your father has played on me, and has changed my hire ten times, and God has not permitted him to do evil with me. And he says thus, The speckled are your hire, then all the flock bore speckled ones, and he says thus, The striped are your hire, then all the flock bore striped. And God takes away the substance of your father and gives to me. And it comes to pass at the time of the flock conceiving that I lift up my eyes and see in a dream. And behold, the male goats which are going up the flock are striped, speckled and spotted. And the messengers of God says to me in a dream, Jacob, and I say, here I am. And he says, now lift up your eyes and see that all the male goats are going up on the flock are striped, speckled and spotted, for I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethphel, where you have anointed a standing pillar, where you have vowed a vow to me. Now arise, go out from this land and return to the land of your birth. And Rachel answers, lay also, and say to him, Have we yet a portion and inheritance in the house of our father? Have we not been reckoned strangers to him? For he has sold us, and he also utterly consumes our money. For all the wealth which God has taken away from our father, it is ours and our children's. And now all that God has said to you, do. And Jacob rises and lifts up his sons and his wives on camels and leads all his livestock and all his substance which he has required, the livestock of his getting which he has acquired in Padan Aram to go to his father Isaac in the land of Canaan. And Laban has gone to shear his flock, and Rachel steals the teraphim which her father has. And Jacob deceives the heart of Laban, the Aramean, because he has not declared to him that he is fleeing. And he flees. He and all that he has, and rises and passes over the river, and sets his face towards the Mount of Gil Gilead. And it is told to Laban on the third day that Jacob has fled, and he takes his brothers with him and pursues after a journey on seven days, and overtakes him in the Mount of Gilead. And God comes to Laban the Aramean in a dream on the night and says to him, Take heed to yourself, lest you speak with Jacob from good to evil. And Laban overtakes Jacob, and Jacob has fixed his tent in the mountain, and Laban with his brothers has fixed theirs in the Mount of Gilead. And Laban says to Jacob, What have you done that you deserve my heart, and lead away my daughters as captives of the sword? Why have you hidden yourself to flee and deceive me, and have not declared to me, and I send you away with joy and with song, with tambourine and with harp, and have not permitted me to kiss my sons and my daughters. Now you have acted foolishly in doing so. My hand is to God to do evil with you. But the God of your father last night has spoken to me, saying, Take heed to yourself, 
from speaking with Jacob from good to evil. And now you have certainly gone, gone, because you have been very desirous for the house of your father. Why have you stolen my gods? And Jacob answers to Laban, saying, Because I was afraid, for I said, Lest you violently take away your daughters from me, with whomsoever you find your gods, whom he must not live. Before our brothers discern yourself, what is with me, and take to yourself. And Jacob has not known that Rachel has stolen them. And Laban goes into the tent of Jacob, and into the tent of Leah, and into the tent of the housemaidens, and has not found. And he goes out from the tent of Leah, and goes out from the, goes into the tent of Rachel. And Rachel has taken the teraphim, and puts them in the furniture of the camel, and sits on them. And Laban fills all the tent, and has not found. And she says to her father, Let it not be displeasing in the eyes of my lord, that I am not able to rise at your presence, for the way of woman is on me. And he searches and, searches and has not found a teraphim. And it is displeasing to Jacob, and he strives with Laban. And Laban answers and says to, to Jacob, and Jacob answers and says to Laban, what is my transgression? What is my sin that you have burned after me, that you have felt all my vessels? What have you found of all the vessels in my house set here before my brothers and your brothers, and they decide between us both? These 20 years I am with you, your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, and the rams of your flock I have not eaten. The torn I have not brought to you, I repay it, from the hand you seek it. I have been deceived by day, and I have been deceived by night. I have been thus, drought has consumed me in the day, and frost by night, and my sleep wanders from my eyes. This is to me twenty years in your house. I have served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock, and you change my hire ten times. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac has been with me, surely now you had sent me away empty. God has seen my affliction and the labour of my hands, and reproves last night. And Laban answers and says to Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, and the sons my sons, and the flock my flock, and all that you are seeing is mine, and to my daughters. What do I what do I to these today, and to their sons whom they have been born? And now come and let us make a covenant, I and you. It has been a, for a witness between me and you. And Jacob takes a stone and lifts it up for a standing pillar. And Jacob says to his brothers, gather stones, and they take stones, and they make a heap, and they eat there on the heap. And Laban calls it Jager Sadutha, and, Jake, and Jacob calls it Gilead. And Laban says, This heap is witness between me and you. Therefore, he has called its name Galid. Mispah also, he says, Yahweh watches between me and you, for we are hidden from one another. If you afflict my daughters or take wives besides my daughters, there is no man between us. See, God is witness between me and you. And Laban says to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold the standing pillar which I have cast between me and you. This heap is witness, and the standing pillar is witness, that I do not pass over this heap to you, and that you do not pass over this heap and the standing pillar to me for evil. The God of Abraham, the God of Nahur, judges between us. And the God of Father, and Jacob swears by the fear of his father Isaac. And Jacob sacrifices a sacrifice on the mountain, and calls to his brothers to eat bread. And they eat bread, and lodge on the mountain. And Laban rises in the early morning, and kisses his sons and daughters, and blesses them. And Laban goes on, and turns back to his place. For these few words give thanks, blessed love. So yeah, quite a long chapter there, um, but essentially, as you heard, it's about Jacob 
and Jacob wanting to return to his father, the land of his father, Isaac, and this is on construction of God. So secretly, Jacob gets together his daughters and all the flock and all his people, his entourage, and leaves Laban because he's worried that Laban's going to stop him as he's tried to stop him previously leaving before. Um, and then, as we heard before leaving, Rachel steals some of the, the idols, the teraphim, which are like idols, um, from his father. And then Laban finds out a few days later that they've all gone and then chases them down and knows that he's, that something's been stolen and then searches the, searches Jacob's camp and says, why have you left? Because I would have given you a party if you had if you told me you were leaving and you stolen my daughters away. And Jacob says, Well, I feared for you that you were gonna try and stop me because you stopped me before. Um so they search the camp and they can't find the idols because Rachel was sat on a camel, and as it says um in here that Rachel says to her father that she's the the way of woman is with her, um, so she can't stand up from the from the, the camel so she basically she's on her period so Laban accepts that and they can't find the idols and then it goes on and then a peace pact is made between Jacob and Laban and they 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 create a stone pillar um in the name of peace and then Laban says I won't go beyond this point to cause you any harm and you don't come beyond this point to cause me any harm and they kind of call a truce. Um, and then that's how it ends there. And then the barn goes back to his place. And then Jacob carries on to his his land. So, yeah, really interesting, uh, you know, quite epic storytelling on some levels. I think one thing that strikes me is Rachel. So the conceit hasn't stopped. You know, the story of Jacob in relationship to Laban is full of deceit. And here we see Rachel leaving her father's house but before she leaves she steals these idols um from from her father the household teraphins but i think what's interesting is that they are actually protected by the monothesis god by the god of abraham um because god has instructed jacob with rachel and leah to go back to canaan so Rachel sits on top of the idols and says to her father, I can't get up because I'm on my period. So the idols didn't protect themselves. It was actually God who protected the, Rachel and in turn protecting the idols. So that's interesting because it shows God's power and not the power of these teraphim idols. So that's one thing that kind of struck out to me. And another thing is, again, the peace pact. We saw the peace pact um made with abraham we saw the peace pact with isaac and now we're seeing a peace pact between laban and jacob and even you know they both feel aggrieved <coughs> excuse me jacob feels aggrieved because of all the years of deceit and changing terms of contract that laban's been done to him and we see laban being aggrieved because his whole family his daughters um have left him under the cover of darkness and also being stolen from his household. So he feels aggrieved. So in the face of both their grievances, they both agree, okay, let's just make peace and we, you know, we live another day kind of thing. So yeah, that's interesting as well. Um, and also throughout all of this, we see God protecting Jacob and God fulfilling his promise. So he says to Jacob, Go back to the land of your fathers, back to the land of Canaan, and I will protect you. And we see God fulfilling that promise in that chapter. And we also see when Laban's angry, because he, re he realises that he's been stolen from, stolen from his family and in terms of these idols. God comes to Laban in a dream and says, do not do, not do any harm to Jacob and do not speak any harm to Jacob because I am protecting them. So that's why when Laban finds Jacob, he says, well, you've stolen my daughters and you've stolen my idols. Why have you done this to me? But I'm not going to do you any harm because I know your God is protecting you. 
Um, so, and then the end, that's what then causes the truce as well. Um, when Laban doesn't find the idols. So all through that, we see human kind of, yeah, weakness, deceit, theft, etc. Um, but we still see God fulfilling his promises throughout that navigation. And he's showing his, showing his true face to Jacob in terms of the God of protection. But he also showed his face to Laban um, as well. Um, so all sides get to see the glory of God and the power of God, etc. Um, even Rachel, who's sitting on these idols. So there's a lot going on in that chapter. A really interesting story, really interesting, um, yeah, set of navigations, really. Um, so, yeah, I will end there. <laughs> um, thanks for listening. I think it's been really interesting. And again, even though... I've read these chapters. I haven't read these chapters now for many, many years. When I read the, the Bible the first time, um, you know, many years ago, you know, not even sure how long ago that was, like reading it chapter to chapter, probably a good 20 years ago or something. So it's really good to revisit. You know, a lot of us kind of dip into the Bible and do certain chapters, and that's fine as well. But there is a place for reading it all the way through because um, it gives you a different kind of overview so yeah thank you for witnessing my journey on this path so have a blessed day god willing it's a breath for cure blessed love and um again god willing i'll be back tomorrow oneness